Hello, my friends. It's Ranger Russ from the Meg's Point Nature Center. Very excited today. We're coming to you from Hammonasset Beach State Park. The Moraine Trail is where this program is going to begin. We'll see where we end up. But before we start our walk, let's remind everyone tomorrow at 10 o'clock, Dr. Nick Bellantoni will be here at the Nature Center. Hopefully, if, if the weather's too bad, we're going to try and connect with him uh, through Zoom. But look for that tomorrow at 10 o'clock, a lecture on the Native Americans that lived along the shoreline here. So please tune in to that on Facebook Live. Uh, there's also going to be a Zoom uh, link put out that'll be on our website. We're going to put it up on Facebook. You'll see it around. Uh, you can link to that as well so that you can have uh, more interaction with the program. Now, I'm also going to remind everybody these programs happen every Tuesday through Friday at 11 o'clock, and I intend to continue doing that at least for the rest of this year or until Christmas. I'm going to be taking some time off um, during the Christmas New Year's week there. So look for that as well. I don't know if you can see, we've got a uh, beautiful sun shining through the clouds behind me here. This is out on the Moraine Trail. So this is a, a recessional moraine. It occurred as the glacier was receding back. All of these rocks were left. So we're going to look at lots of the rocks as we go along. We'll do some beach combing as we go along here as well. I've already looked for seals and I'll show you those rocks here. Uh, not seeing any seals right now, unfortunately. So there you're looking at our Cedar Island uh, platform across the marsh there. This area here is off limits at all times of the year. This is a very important bird area. And there are several species of birds that nest beyond the sign here. We get piping plovers, least terns, and oyster catchers. All endangered species all need to be given a wide berth. So uh, it's off limits at this time of year, even though they're not out there, because people walking on it can damage the habitat. And then the birds won't have a place to come back to. So keep that in mind. If you see a sign and you think, oh, that's only for a specific season, not actually, okay? It is for any time of the year because we're protecting the habitat as well as the birds themselves. These rocks out here, it's part of the moraine heading towards Clinton. As the moraine goes across Clinton Harbor, which is what you're looking at, it'll curve inland a little bit and then continue all the way to Ledger. Oh, look, there's a duck just drifted in here. Let's see if he'll uh, give us a silhouette. Oh, maybe I can zoom in a little bit. This is close enough. If I zoom in too much, it might go out of focus. Oh, another one just popped up. So we've got some little diving ducks out here. Now it looks like, oh, back under, it looks like their bills are not for catching fish. So these are algae eaters or seaweed or uh, maybe some bottom dwelling snails and things what they're going to be eating. I cannot tell what they are yet. This one's got its head tucked down. I think it's just going to be, oh, pop right back up. That pops up like a buoy, doesn't it? Like if you ever try and sink a buoy. Very cool. And back under. All right, we could sit here and watch these uh, ducks all day. But back to these rocks, uh, the seals will sit out on the rocks. Now, we're not at dead low tide. There are more rocks that are exposed at dead low tide, and that's typically where the seals like to haul out. But they will haul out on any of these rocks, high or low tide. So there's always a chance that you can see a seal out here. I want to look right here. Do you notice that rock right there? It looks very different from all the others. We have a lot of uh, yellowish, fairly smooth rocks here, and then one uh, much more gray, not very smooth at all rock. And that's because it's a different type of rock from the others. And that's one of the things that tells you that this was left by the glacier because different kinds of rocks are carried by the glacier from different places. So, I'm going to climb off the rock I'm on here. 
going to head this way. And we're going to go along our moraine trail and see if we can find some really cool things before we head along the moraine trail, though. Take a look at that. That's the Nature Center. What an awesome view of the Nature Center. That is so cool. Got our two buildings. You can see our flagpole from here. You can see the van and the trailer. All right, so people are already doing it, but I encourage you to put up questions, comments, and please put up uh, where you're messaging from. I always like to see that. And if you wouldn't mind putting up the weather in your area. Right now, we've got some beautiful weather here at the park. There's a bit of a breeze out on the Moraine Trail at this angle. I'm sheltered from it, so I'm not getting the strong winds. But over at the Nature Center, we were it's a bit more chilly over there. But tomorrow, this evening and then into tomorrow, we're expecting some a lot of rain, some strong winds, and, and possibly some snow. So that could be exciting. Now, let's take a look here. This, uh, what is this? Honeysuckle is still in, got flowers going on it. And, not flowers, sorry, leaves. Back in there, you can see those uh, bright orange berries. That's bittersweet. So these are two invasive species. Oh, and then there's an autumn olive right here. So three invasive species right here. That is one of the difficulties we have out here on the Moraine Trail. Some invasives are taking over. Here on this side, these are all invasives as well, but these, the leaves have all dropped off of those. All right, let's, uh, let's keep going here. I don't know if you can see it, but there are some beautiful sun rays shining through the clouds up there. Now they say that the when you can see the sun rays like that, it's because the sunlight is hitting water in the air. It's, there's got to be moisture in the air there. Not necessarily from rain, but often it, it does mean rain. I think those are too high, though, so those are probably just the sun rays going through the clouds. So, that's pretty neat. I'm not sure that that shows up on camera, though, as vivid as it is in person. Just another reason that you should get out and visit a state park if you can. I know many people have messaged me and they're, they're not able to get out. They're either working or um, in isolation or, or uh, quarantine. So these programs are a way for them to visit parks. But if it's possible, you should try and get out and get some fresh air. I know one of the things that uh, the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, which is who I work for, one of the things we really try and push is fresh air, getting people to exercise and recreate in our state parks. And got some bird activity over here. Let's see if you guys can hear it. I do not recognize the call. There's a little sparrow bouncing around. That's the high pitch. Oh, it's a wren of some kind. Can you see it up there? I don't know if you can hear it. It just fl flitted down. So there's a little sparrow up close here and a wren in the back. The wren is one, the one making all the racket. Now we have a few different types of wrens and there it goes. We have house wrens, Carolina wrens, winter wrens, and I'm not sure which one that one was, but that was pretty cool. All right, we're gonna go over here on this side. Go out on this little beachy area here and see what other things we can find. So you can see a lot of shells here. These are slipper snails. These on this side are really pale because they've been out here a while. Then 
get closer to the water, they're more pink and orange. And that's because they're more recently washing up. These wash up every winter. We get more and more of them. They build up over time. But one of the things I've been noticing, I walked out on the Moraine Trail today, a lot of bunker washing up here. Now, we had a bunker run the past few weeks, tens of thousands of bunker right off the shore here, which allows larger fish and birds to grab them. And that's why we end up finding them uh, washed up on the beach, partially eaten. The bluefish are really going after them. I don't know if anybody saw that video, but I was out trying to to catch some after the video and I could they would jump out of the water because there were so many bluefish trying to eat them. Let's see what else we can find along here. You ne really never know what you're going to find washing up on our shore. The winter we get more things washing up. So you get a stronger wave action. It can push bigger items up onto the beach. It pushes them farther up onto the beach. You can take a look at this log here. That's a big, big heavy chunk of log right there. That was pushed up. That's been here a while though. You got some other logs. We don't move these logs around out here. The Moraine Trail is too tough to get a vehicle out. And we this isn't really an area that needs to be cleared Anyway, here's a, looks like a pylon for a dock. Somebody lost, practically brand new. That's unfortunate. Let's see, what other things? There's a cairn there, cairn. I always say that wrong. A little stack of rocks. Now, typically these were used for trail markers across a uh, high mountain trails where the uh, there aren't any trees or anything to put blazes on so they would just do a short stack of rocks they're also used uh, for memorial markers now here's a really good view of rocks the jumble of rocks different colors shapes textures so again these rocks are not uh, from this area It's actually a really cool view isn't that beautiful I, I Tell people all the time that there are photo opportunities everywhere you turn here at Hammond asset Any of the state parks. I think I said it many times at yesterday vid visiting uh, Wharton Brook State Park I'm really surprised all the time how beautiful uh, the parks are every time you turn a corner you have something else that you might want to to look at or take a picture of not just here at Hammond Acid it's true of all of the state parks I've visited so far all right so Our little wren friend uh, was heading in the other direction away from us. I'm not hearing any birds coming this direction. We may find something though as we go. So the Moraine Trail is not the easiest trail to hike. Most of it is, is like this, just a few rocks here or there to watch out for but then you get into areas like this lots of big speed bump type rocks so I, I really encourage people when you're going out to visit a state park do your research look it up online uh, pick out a trail that you'd like to to hike check what condition the trail is depending on your skill level Definitely let someone know if you're visiting a state park. Now, most of Connecticut state parks are not large enough for you to get into really big trouble 
in them, but it is really nice to, to have somebody that's aware of where you are just in case something unforeseen happens. You know, you twist an ankle or something and can't get back to your car. Always good to have people that know what's going on. So I've looked at this little area before. This is our, our tide pool. We used to have really big, beautiful, flat, expansive tide pools. Now it's more like a, more like a little puddle, but lots of small fish. I'm seeing lots of small, look like they're all killifish, which is neat. I don't know if you can see them swimming around. They are pretty tiny, only about an inch long. Some rocks in there as well. A few slipper snails, not alive, just the shells. Here's something pretty cool. Now the water comes across here at, at high tides and usually it's an extreme high tide. A, a, a regular high tide, a mean high tide, medium high tide, or average high tide is not gonna come this far up. But with a full moon and a new moon, the tides come across. But this gives you an idea how strong the tides are. You see this rock here and the washout from around the rock. This is happening as the water flows past the rock and it is coming from that direction this way that this really happens. So it's the tide coming in. You get this swirl and then you see there's a little rise here. So that's the water coming this direction. And you get a deep furrow on the back side of it. Actually it would be the front side if the water's coming in this direction. You get this deep furrow in the front because the water is hitting the rock and is causing it to swirl out around the rock. So that's some pretty strong incoming tide to cause that. Now this little rock here has some as well and this rock here has the pool around it also. So that's pretty cool. So we have a couple of questions. Someone's asking where the trail entrance is and it's at our fisherman's parking lot is the easiest access to the Moraine Trail. And I will show you where that is. We're gonna end up at that point. And another question, why are the pools smaller? So back in the 90s, one of the hurricanes that hit wiped out the tide pools completely. And, and the way it did that, it wiped away this spit of land here. All of this was washed out and it was low rocks. So when the tide went out, all the water went with it. As this has built up, and now since then, this, this grassy stripe you see here, that was not there in the 90s. There was nothing but rocks. So now that we've built up this little land mass, it's now able to trap the water over here on this back side. And it's only right now, like I said, a, two small pools. Uh, but as the water continues to create action like this, I just tripped over a rock, this could cr begin to wash out and create larger uh, pools as time goes on. It can also do the reverse and those pools could fill up with slipper snails, uh, snipper, slipper snail shells. So it is possible, but the tide pools can grow. Now here's something uh, everybody loves to see these mazes or, or swirls of rock. I don't necessarily like this because all of these rocks came from the rocky shore. So all of this was crab habitat that's been taken out and spread out like this, which is now no longer any animal habitat. Um, it's too exposed and too many people now walk through it for it to be decent habitat. So I really don't encourage people to change the habitat with these decorations. I know they're artistic and they're attractive. And, you know, I, uh, as a child, I would love to run around that spiral. I've done it here a few times as well. 
And even a big pile of rocks like this, this happens, somebody sees that somebody else put a rock there, so they put a rock there, and now every time somebody walks by, they toss a rock on the pile. You're really changing the habitat. Crabs cannot live up in those high rocks. Those rocks aren't covered by water, uh, unless it's an extreme case. So keep in consideration when you're doing your, uh, using rocks for art or you think you're being artistic in a state park, think about the habitat that you're changing or how you're changing the habitat to create that art. So please keep that in mind. I love the saying, uh, take nothing but pictures or memories, leave nothing but footprints. That's great. You're not changing anything around. That's another reason to really stay on the trails in the parks. Now, we get lots of visitors, up to 3 million, over 3 million visitors at Hammonasset. If every one of those visitors moved a rock, imagine 3 million rocks going from this area here to the maze. That's really not going to be good for the, uh, for the habitat. Even if it was only one in 10 people, that's still a lot of rocks getting moved. So again, just keep in mind that this is a, a wild habitat. We wanna keep our parks pristine and natural. Keep that wild habitat uh, looking as natural and wild as possible. All right, so we're gonna, we're out now. Oh, there's something to look at. Here we go. There's a claw. Many of you probably recognize this as a lobster claw. It's a small lobster and that is the crushing claw of the lobster. Now unfortunately lobsters are in decline in Long Island Sound. And actually there's another set of claws. These are still attached. So with this set you can see Here's the ripping or cutting claw. Here's the crushing claw. Lobsters use both to eat. They can use this crushing claw to, to break open shells and then they pick the meat out or tear meat off of uh, big dead things. They are not strictly scavengers though. That is a big misconception that they're just uh, like cockroaches of the sea. They are not. These are predators. They will hunt down shellfish and crabs and are very, very proficient predators. Now I'm also noticing there's a bit of a smell here from the dead things that have washed up on the rocks. There's a lot of flies uh, buzzing around, attracted by that smell. That's one of the things that happens in a state park as things wash up. There's another piece of a, of a bunker. The bunker are a great food source and they're a food source for lots of different things. So we like to see, you know, bunker are a really valuable resource. They were valuable to people and they're valuable to wildlife. Just picked up a couple of uh, jingle shells. These are the two of the colors they come in, orange and yellow, and then sometimes you can find a black one. I'll keep an eye out, see if we can see that. See people taking bags of rocks off the beach, not sure what they do with them. They take bags of rocks off the beach. Typically, I've seen it as well, and I've spoken to people about it. Typically, they are uh, just decorating around their gardens with it. Just picked up a tire. This is the easiest tire I will ever carry off the beach. All right, let's keep going. We have this uh, whelk egg case. That's a knobbed whelk egg case because this edge is flat. If that edge comes to a point, that's a channeled whelk egg case. Keep going, and here is a knobbed whelk. So this is the largest of our, our whelks. Get quite a bit bigger than the channeled whelk. 
quite a bit bigger than this. Here's a really flat jingle shell. Look how flat that one is. There we go. All right, what else can we find here? I have a question. Will the maze stay or will the park return the land to natural state? I think uh, currently we're leaving it uh, the way it is, the maze. Hopefully not collecting them to make kindness rocks. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be good, would it? But I'm sure... I'm sure that happens as well. So there's a pretty substantial pile of uh, jingles we have here. I mean, not jingles, uh, slipper snails. I don't know why I always do that with jingle, jingle shells and slipper snails. Here's a little something different, and, and there's a lot of them right in this area. So people see this and they think that it's a sudden die-off when you see all of one thing washed up on the beach. It could be, but it's not necessarily true. So here we have a lot of red beard sponge. And again, I've talked about this in other programs. The red beard sponge, when it's alive, is bright orange. And then it turns this dull green color after it's been dead for a while. This little section going ahead of me here is loaded with these. But I don't know for sure that this is just like a sudden die-off out here or if the wave action is separating them and carrying them all to the same place on the beach. That happens as well. That's why you get really fine sand on some beaches or one end of a beach, like here at our beach, the camper's beach ends up with really fine sand and we get much rougher, more gravelly sand throughout the rest of the park. And that is just a simply an action uh, of wave action, a cause of wave action. There's another big jingle. There's another bunker. There's another one down here. Oh, sorry about that. Hooked my cable up there. There's an, some more bunker as we go here. Here's something that I always try and bring this back with me. There's a clump of fishing line and a balloon string. And uh, inside there, there's a skate egg case. Awesome. That is really cool. But all this string, this is going to have to come back with me. And we have another bunker. And another bunker. Again, when you get that many fish, tens of thousands, off the beach, you're going to get dead ones washing up. Some killed by predators. Some maybe natural causes. Now here I see something very special. We talked about the knobbed whelks. And now I find one. That is inside there. Let's see if it's alive. It is alive. Very cool. There's a live knobbed whelk. You can see the knobs on there. That's the operculum. It's a little armored door. That's really neat. I'm going to have to get this back out into the water here. Uh... If the Nature Center were open, I would consider bringing this back. Sometimes I exchange the ones we have back there for new ones, but since we are not open, I actually think we only have one knobbed whelk back there right now. This is just really cool. This is a good size. You can see a growth ring here too. A growth, uh, not a ring, but a ridge. That is one growth season right there. Over an inch of growth in one year or growth season, not necessarily a year. It's possible that they have two growth seasons in a year. It's possible that they skip a year and don't grow at all. But usually those are 
can be identified as years. All right. Let's keep going, see if there are anything else of interest we can see as we go. Here's one of the favorite rocks here at Hammonasset. It's well known. See lots of people climbing up there to get their pictures taken. And um, that was dropped off by the glacier. Not necessarily the biggest rock we have here, but it is a good sized rock and it's a very cool shape. That's really neat. There's a nice gull. Look at that view right there. How beautiful is that? What did I mean by bunker run? I know fish are bunkers. It's like a school of fish. Uh, they, a run of fish is when the fish are migrating or moving through an area. And the bunker go on runs. They're not here all the time. When the bunker are running, then the fishermen, uh, you know, they all come out and try and catch them at that time. So a bunker run is when they're moving into an area either close to the shore or up a river or something along those lines. So that is a fish run. Susan says how beautiful everything is and it is absolutely beautiful today. All right, we're going to be cutting up over here, and I'll show you the end of the trail. Smelling more of those uh, bunker. Take a look at the size of this log here. Now, I used to use this log. It was further out on the beach. The waves have pushed it up on the rock. I used to use this rock this log to have uh, our school cl uh, field trip sit on it while we talked about the rocky shore. So that's pretty neat. All right. I think I actually missed the main trail, but this little spur will get us up onto it. This used to be the, marine, the main part of the trail. It all got washed out one year. So, we divert people now to this trail here. And this is our fisherman's lot. So if you are visiting, you're gonna to wanna to park here. You can hop right up on to the Moraine Trail and have a seat on the bench here and look out at this beautiful view. Ah, oh, looks like some uh, some more diving ducks there. Looks like those are scoters. There are, oh, there they go some, uh, what is that, a merganser? Flying by, three of them. And the scoters, and they dove. Uh, we get white-winged scoters, surf scoters. By the silhouette, that's the only way I could tell because I couldn't really see them much more than just a silhouette. All right, we can see coming ahead here. I can show you the Megs Point Nature Center truck there in the parking lot. We've got some, uh, again, this is a lot of invasives. We do try and control the invasives, but you have to be very careful because birds will nest 
in those invasive plants. So you don't want to be cutting them away during bird nesting season. All right, and we are back to our truck. So if you're not familiar with Fisherman's Lot, it's at the farthest end of Meg's Point. And we've got this, uh, this boulder pond right here. Let's walk over and take a look, see if there's anything interesting in the boulder pond. We have a lot of gulls. I always love the gulls. They get a bad rap, but gulls are awesome. If you think of it this way, imagine all of those dead fish. Imagine how many of them the gulls have eaten. If we didn't have those gulls, there would be a lot more dead fish out on the beach. So be grateful for the gulls. Our beaches wouldn't smell as nice if we didn't have all these gulls. You can see there's a glacial erratic left in the middle there. That's how this little pond got its name is Boulder Pond. This one doesn't really have a name on any maps, uh, probably because it is a salt pan, not really a pond. It's uh, shallow. Last time I walked out into it, the deepest it got was a little over my knee. Now it may be a little deeper now. Sea level has risen a little bit since then, so it's probably a bit deeper, but this is still a shallow uh, salt pan more than a pond. Have a comment here, while wow, the whelk is edible for humans, Yes, it is. And actually, that's one of the things most of the fishermen in Long Island Sound are switching over to uh, catching whelks. And most of it is shipped out of the country. Most of it goes to Asia. There are much more popular food in Asia. But I know many restaurants along the shore here are starting to serve whelks in different dishes um, because they're uh, much more accessible than, than the lobster. And again, we've got a great view of our nature center facility. Let's zoom in a little bit there. It does get blurry when I zoom in, doesn't it? Looks like mostly herring gulls out here. Looks like there might be a smaller, there might be some uh, ringbills and Bonaparte's gulls. I think we determined last time that the small gulls with the, uh, with the black beaks, those are juvenile Bonaparte's gulls. That was very good. All right. So I hope everybody enjoyed this program. I'm still having a blast doing these programs. It was absolutely uh, so fantastic to go out to uh, Wharton Brook yesterday. I hope everyone enjoyed that program. I want to show you here, there's the bittersweet. This is one of the things people will collect this bittersweet for decorations and making wreaths. It is really not a good idea because now you're spreading these seeds all over the place. And bittersweet does not need help being spread around. It goes pretty much everywhere across the state. So please don't, uh, don't try and use it as decoration. All right, again, these programs will continue Tuesday through Friday at 11 o'clock until Christmas. And then I'm going to be taking some time off for Christmas. So I hope everybody is preparing for the holiday. And I hope that you are staying safe. Please keep that in mind. Wearing masks, keeping your distance. Probably not a good idea to gather in someone's home in a big groups over the holiday. So if you can do a, like a video chat. I know I was talking to one of our park staff yesterday and they had everybody make it for Thanksgiving. Each person made different dishes and they divide them up into portions. They met in a parking lot, passed them off to each other, said hello, and then went on their ways, keeping their distance and wearing masks, even from their own family members. So that is a great thing to do. Uh, and you may think it's overly cautious. It's better safe than sorry. So. Hope everybody enjoys. Hope to see you all tomorrow at 10 o'clock for our 
Native American talk on uh, tribes that lived along the shoreline here. Until tomorrow, this is Ranger Russ signing off from Meg's Point at Hammonasset Beach State Park.